Samira Bawumia, Acting National Chairperson and National Officers, the Chief of Staff and Officials of the Presidency, the Chairperson and members of the MPP National Council of Elders, Senior Minister, Minister for Parliamentary Affairs and Leadership of the Majority in Parliament, Ministers of State, Deputy Ministers of State, Members of Parliament, Members of the National Council, Regional Chairpersons and Regional Officers, Constituency Chairpersons and Constituency Officers, Members of the External Branches, Delegates, Fellow Ghanaians, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm very, very happy we could meet today to do the unfinished business of our annual delegates conference in Cape Coast. There, the decision was made to hold this conference with a one-item agenda, amendments to our constitution. But when I was coming here, I wasn't sure that I was coming to the proper place. I thought I was coming to the National Officers Election Conference when I see all the things that are going on around here. But I want to take the opportunity to congratulate the party leadership, the national officers, especially our hardworking acting general secretary for being able to organize this conference. With the mandate of the National Delegates Conference, the National Council set up a committee to harmonize the various amendments for easy consideration by this conference. The committee has done a good job, and their work has been circulated to all of you. We're grateful to our first vice chairman, Frederick Fabia Anto, and the members of his committee for this excellent job that they have done. The work has been presented in such a manner that it should be relatively easy for us to deal with it expeditiously. Today is a sacred day in my life. It is my late mother, Yabuakwea's birthday. So I am sure that this is going to be a happy and lucky day for us. Hopefully, we're going to work in a consensual manner as befits a ruling party that won a great victory a year ago and has been in office for almost a year. A year which has been full of important achievements which have won the admiration of the nation. We have fulfilled our free senior high school pledge and our determination to revive the National Health Insurance Scheme and the country's agriculture. It is clear already that the program for planting for food and jobs is a success and is going to be an even greater success in the year 2018. We've also had important challenges, the invisible and delta forces, and the tensions at the grassroots of our party because over jobs. I appreciate very much the anxiety about jobs. What I'm saying is that the foundation has been laid for jobs. It has not been easy because we inherited a bankrupt economy but because of the ingenuity of the people I'm working with, we've been able to lay a good foundation. I'm asking you, let us remain united and confident. We are on the right path, and soon it will be all obvious to everybody. Our race is not a sprint. It is a cross country. It is a marathon race. And we're going to win at the end, not just at the beginning. I want us to have a business-like conference and make it clear to Ghanaians that we are indeed the natural and proper party of government for Ghana. 
work with consensus and with unity. We have agreed the three controversial amendments are going to be withdrawn. The first, the first is the amendment making it impossible for dual citizens to hold party office and contest elections. That amendment will be a disaster for our party. It will lead to the collapse of our overseas branches, and it is not constitutional. I'm aware of the problem that the amendment seeks to cure, but we have to do with, do with it in another manner. And that is amendment number 30, Roman 5a, at page 8 of the book. The second proposal that is going to be withdrawn and has been withdrawn is the one that gives MPs the right to appoint me members of the constituency executive. I am strongly opposed to the measure, and it is going to be withdrawn. The third amendment to which I am absolutely opposed is that one that is set down as motion number 85 which seeks to make the presidential candidate, the president of our party, the flag bearer and leader of the party. That motion is against all precedent and tradition of this party, and I am going to ask for Congress, to, if they will not be withdrawn, to oppose and reject it. We do not need that amendment. Since the Cape Coast Conference, the National Council has acted to restore and preserve the stability of the party at the grassroots. And I want everybody to listen to me very carefully, what I'm about to say. In the year 2000, in the year 2008, and in the year 2016, <coughs> three times, the opposition has defeated an incumbent government. Their victory was made easier by the breakdown in the relations between MMDCs, MPs, and constituency chairmen. <coughs> In 2000, we benefited from this. When as a result of the Suedu Declaration, there was a lot of restlessness in the NDC at the grassroots, many local conflicts. Even though the country wanted a change, it was made easier by the disruption in the NDC. The same thing happened in 2008 when the NDC took advantage of the divisions in our party at the grassroots as a result of 17 competitors for the party leadership. <coughs> Again, in 2016, the conflicts between the Mills elements, the Rawlings elements, and the <laughs> helped us in, to our famous victory. They say people do not learn from history. We must learn from history. And that is what the National Council has done with my active support. The Council has passed a resolution banning MMDCs from competing in parliamentary primary unless they step down three years before the election, if they want to compete. <coughs> we do not need MMDCs to disturb this party at the group grassroots from their job. 
The council has done the same to three constituency and regional offices, the chairperson, secretary, and treasurer. This is to make the provision that bans the national chairman, general secretary, and treasurer from contesting the presidential candidature extended all the way to the regional and constituency levels. The National Council is active to fill a gap that should not be there. I know that some people want the ban to be extended to cover all constituency and regional offices and all government appointees. This will be a radical measure that needs the support of the conference and as on a duly passed amendment. We need to consider this in a proper manner. <coughs> I am prepared to do whatever is necessary to guarantee this victory for this party, victory after victory. But to do so, I need your active support. 